Hello, BookTube. I'm Peg, the Book Prize Addict, and I'm here today to tell you about arguably my very favorite book prize of all of them. And uh, what I'm definitely going to be following and the day is going to be announced is day after tomorrow, Thursday, September 26th. It's the Gold Goldsmith's Prize 2018. Uh, just a little bit about it. It's uh, in, in the short, sweet terms, it's for experimental literature. But uh, the, their uh, uh, website says that it's actually um, to reward fiction that breaks the mold or extends the possibilities of the novel form. Uh, this was first given, this fairly new prize was first uh, given in 2013. Um, by the and the Goldsmith is a new university press at the University of London. It's also partly uh, sponsored by the New Statesman, a weekly magazine um, of cultural and political uh, things that celebrated its hundred year anniversary in 2013. Um, I, before I say any more, if you're interested in this or any other prizes, as I've mentioned before please take a look on the Goodreads forum of Mooks and Gripes. I've spelled it down out down below. There's uh, different categories where there's some very literate people talk about all the different book prices that come up and they will be talking at length about the goldsmiths. They'll even have categories for every book that's on it. So uh, if you're interested, they, that's my go-to thing for all the information on esoteric book prizes. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to tell you some books that uh, I maybe will be on it, I'd like to see on it, and I've heard about. And first of all, I'm going to show you my very favorite one that I pegged for the winner. Is that upside down? It's upside down. Okay, The Fountain in the Forest by Tony White. Now, I'm going to come back to it in a minute and talk to you a little bit more about why I like it and what it is. But first, I'm going to talk about some of the techniques it used, which comes from what we call the Olipo movement. It's a literary movement in uh, France that began in 1960. And a bunch of avant-garde writers and a, and a few mathematicians got together and decided to uh, start this writing experiment where uh, they were given uh, different constrained writing techniques. In other words, there's something in their writing they have to do like different things mathematically. The seventh word had to be rhymed with the 18th word. I mean, just real crazy things like that. And uh, it, it, it wasn't just for a big game. It actually was supposed to, and I believe it did, force them to think about their writing more and to draw on more words and use more interesting words. And uh, one of the things is that uh, supposedly if you read uh, something with Olapon techniques, you aren't conscious of it. It just seems like good writing. And the first one I'm going to talk about that was written by a member of this group is, uh, is a very ind good indication of that. Okay, the most popular type of uh, technique that they use is called a lipogram, and it's where you leave out one letter of the alphabet in your writing. And the most famous of this one was by Parekh, and it's the, the English translation is avoid, and in it he used no words with E's in them. Now, it was supposedly a surprise, and some people, when they read it the first time, didn't even realize. Now, this new version is pretty evident that there's no E's in it, but it has become uh, one of the one of the most famous one and, and one that the lipogram is used often. Okay, um, last, just a few years ago, uh, this was mainly Nyin authors and writers, but we had one of the first women Author, uh, authors and member of the Olapo movement uh, to write a Sphinx. And uh, this is by Anne Goretta. And this is an interesting constraint on it. The whole book, she's French, so it's translated from the French. Uh, but the whole book, she talks about the narrator, I, and the lover. It's a love story. And 
At the end, you realize you never do find out what gender either of them are. And again, it reads so smoothly. If you hadn't known that, you really almost wouldn't notice. Now, this is uh, in English, I think it wasn't probably as hard, but they say the French version is really amazing since uh, French pronouns are, are, are genderized and it was even harder to write without uh, portraying the gender. Okay, so that, that won a translation prize, I think, uh, in one of our prizes just a few years ago. So, okay, going on with that, this one that I just talked about that I want to see when the fountain in the forest uses an Olupo technique, Olupan it would be. And I'm not gonna tell you, I'm gonna leave it as a surprise. If you read about it, it's easy to see. But I wanna just tell you, when you go to read this, it seems like a very good literate book written well. Uh, it actually is, a, is sort of a police procedural, but involves a philosophic meditation on liberty and more serious subjects and just reads wonderfully. The only hint you might get is every once in a while, you have a word just in the middle of a sentence in a darker type. I can't, they're spread out somewhat. But uh, I won't tell you the gimmick, but there's something to do about where those words came from. And so I'm just gonna let you, I, I'm not gonna spoil a surprise. As I said, you can read about it anywhere if you wanna read a review on it. But uh, I, I think it's just delightful and I sure hope we hear more about this one. Okay, I'm gonna just go over a few of the others that I think I'd like to see on there. Um, starting out with a, uh, the last one in a trilogy um, called by Rachel Cusk called Kudos. Now, this is uh, the last of the trilogy, and the first two were Outline and Transit. And uh, these, the, the first two were uh, on several lists, including the Goldsmiths list. So surely the third one will be the third and final one. Now, I haven't read this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold up the, uh, the second one, I have, the, I have that, I don't have the kudos yet. Um, but anyway, the, the experimental or, or new way of this was how the narrator uh, was portrayed. The narrator was a woman uh, writer who in, this, in, this, in the last one visits Europe in a flux and the questions of personal and political identi identity are rising to the surface now. She, as the narrator, says very little. I've seen it advertised as a, a annihilated narrator. And uh, d d just to give you a, a little, another uh, viewpoint of that, Sam Sachs, who is a, a book reviewer for the Wall Street Journal, a friend of our friend, uh, Steve Donahue, says that it arrives at an idea of feminist art in opposition to the confessional mode, which is so popular. Well, you, obviously most narrators tell you everything you wanna know about what they think and feel. And she doesn't in this. You know about what everybody else is doing and saying and thinking, but she manages to, all of a sudden you realize you know nothing about the narrator herself and you become hungry for, tell us a little bit about you, you know? So it's really amazing in the way that is done in all three novels. Okay, um, next we have a book from Australia called Their Brilliant Careers uh, by Ryan O'Neill. Now this, I'm sure, is a play on the famous book by uh, Stella Franklin. Uh, I get her name mixed up. Miles Franklin was her name. as a woman writer, a uh, very famous Australian woman writer. She has two big book prizes there named after her, and her famous work was called My Brilliant Career. So I'm sure this is a play on that. Um, this one actually is a uh, novel in the guise of 16 biographies of invented Australian writers. And I've starred this, and it is just hilarious. Uh, I mean, it sounds like it's a serious biography until you realize that these guys are a hoot. And it's really well done, and the stories are linked in many ways, of course. Okay, next we have Jot by Sam Thompson. This uh, takes place in London of the 1930s, many 
many signs of modernism are coming. And actually, it's a story of a young psychiatrist, a man named Arthur, and his friendship with a very volatile uh, male writer who, who's his friend and uh, the things that go on between, between them. Um, evidently, this is based on uh, a true, somewhat true story. The uh, author's grandfather, who was good friends with uh, Samuel Beckett, so it, it's, I, I suppose, loosely based on that. Okay, next we have Crudo, which I'm sure is probably you, most of you know about. It's been talked about quite a bit already on BookTube. It's the first uh, novel by Olivia Lang. She's done some other nonfiction. And it's called A Funny and Raw Novel of Love on the Brink of the Apocalypse. Okay, and last... For this, we have Murmur by Will Eaves, and this deals with the arrest and legally enforced chemical castration of mathematician Alan Turing, and it goes on into, it's a profound meditation on what machine consciousness might mean and the implications of artificial intelligence, so I'm looking forward to that one. Okay, that's all the ones I have to talk about that are eligible. I have one that I wish was eligible. It really belongs there. Uh, Three Dreams in the Key of G by our own booktuber, Mark Nash. And uh, unfortunately, this was published, I believe it just missed the cutoff date to be to be. Uh, uh, considered for the Goldsmith Prize this year, but it would definitely belong there. Uh, so I just want to give a, a little push for this. Uh, we do have the Republic of Consciousness Prize coming up. That's for small press, presses, and I have great hopes for this being on that. And I did see a Twitter by a tweet by Mark Nash today that it has finally come out in on a electric on an ebook, and he gave great. Uh, uh, kudos to whoever did the typesetting because he said it'd be very hard to put in the ebook format. So uh, those of you, I know it's in the UK, I don't think we have it here, but that would be great to be able to read it on the ebook. So that's a good one. Okay, this is going to be in, uh, announced. I think they'll have six on the list Thursday the 26th. Who knows what time? So let me know if you have any others you'd like to see on the list or what you think of it if you're planning to read them. I'm planning to read them. Okay, bye.